Hello, my name is Henry Effery, and this is a Godot 2D game development tutorial. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make an enemy that shoots. Or you can take what you learned in this tutorial and make a cannon that shoots. So the first thing that I did was I went to this node here and I double clicked it and named it enemy. And then I clicked on it again and I changed it to a static body 2D. I clicked on this on stack by 2D and I clicked change. I already did this, but these are the things that you could do to get to this point. So I clicked change and then I clicked on enemy again, clicked the plus, and then I look for right. And I, I click create. And then I clicked on enemy again, clicked the plus, and clicked collision shape 2D. Clicked on enemy again, click plus, and clicked and found position 2d then after that i went to sprite and then i went to this triangle here click load and then i loaded this in this enemy png that i made in a program called paint.net and saved it into my godot assets folder mine's is on my usb flash drive but you can save yours to wherever you put your godot assets so that's what i did so then i clicked on this and i clicked open and then I went to this collision shape 2D, and then I went to this box over here. I select new rectangle shape 2D, and then I just uh, resize the cube so that it could fit my shape. After that, I click scene, save as enemy.tsc, and I click save. So that's how I made my enemy. And then the bullet, I did the similar process. I double click this, renamed it bullet. I changed this to an area 2D to change. Then clicked on bullet, clicked on enemy bullet, went to the plus, add the sprite, clicked on enemy bullet again, clicked the plus, and added the collision shape. Then I clicked on the sprite, clicked on this triangle, the load, added the bullet. Collision shape 2D, new circle shape 2D, then resized it. Click scene, enemy bullet.tsn. So that's how I made the bullet. And then as for the room, double click to rename it test room. Click on this, click the plus, and add a camera 2D. And then for this camera, I'm going to click on camera and I'm going to check mark this current to on. So that when we launch our game, our camera will be focused on the middle of the screen where our items will be when we add them later. And then uh, last thing I did was click scene, save as, save that, save the room. And then the final thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that when we launch our game, we'll get this room once the game starts. So to do that, I'm going to go to project, make sure you click run. Click this folder, .tsn. So now, once our game starts, and once our game is launched, we'll get this room here. So now we're gonna go back to this enemy tab, and then I'm gonna add a script to this enemy. And before you add a script, make sure this top node is selected. This node is actually a static body 2D, but we renamed it enemy. Now the code that we're gonna add is gonna extend this particular node here so make sure this particular node is selected and then we're gonna go to script new script enemy gd that's good and then i'm just gonna open this up here and i'm gonna delete all the stuff that's already in here and then i'm gonna paste in this code so once again like i showed you here this code extends this static body and make sure you have extend static by 2D up here or otherwise the code won't work. Okay, so now the first thing I did was I brought the enemy bullet into this code here. See, Let's go. see the enemy bullet, see, enemy bullet. All I did was uh, bring this enemy bullet into this code here and attach it to this variable called bullet. And next we have the bullet count. And this bullet count has to do with how many bullets the enemy can fire before this timer 
reaches up to a certain time frame. So these are the things that we just added into our code. And now down here, this below this funk physics process delta, this has to do with the movement of everything. And so now what, what this says is we're going to have the timer that keeps going up. And then once the timer reached 50 seconds, the timer will start over and the bullet count will start over. And in between that time frame, when the, when the timer is below 50 and when the bullet count is below 1, the enemy will be able to load, keep loading bullets via these two parameters that I just highlighted. I mean, with this timer, you could have, let's go back to our 2D view. See, with this timer, you could also click on the enemy node, go to plus. And then add in a timer and click create. Then you and then uh, let's go back to our 2D node. Then go to node, go to timeout, click connect, and then you could have uh, added. And then you could have let's open this up. Add this timer down here to our script, and then you could regulate the time that way. But I usually prefer to to do my timers through code. Because I feel like I have a little bit better control over what happens with my timer when I do it through code. But a lot of people also do it this way. There are also other tutorials on the web that, that, all, that shows you how to do it this way too. B dot position, it has to do with where the, the bullet will start from. The, the bullet will come from the enemy. Global position means once the bullet is fired, the bullet is going to belong to the room and not the enemy because if bullets continues to be belong to the enemy then if the enemy moves the bullet will go along with it and it'll look kind of weird so we make the bullet belong to the room once it's fired and once that shot is fired the bullet count will go up and all this has to take place before 50 seconds all this stuff is going to go pretty fast because computers count pretty fast so this entire code has to do with the enemy and its gun, basically. So now we're gonna go to the actual bullet. So we're gonna click on this tab here. We're gonna go back to our 2D scene and we're gonna open this up a little more. So now we're gonna add script to this bullet. Make sure this top node is selected because the code that we're gonna add to this bullet is gonna extend this area 2D node that we're calling bullet. Script. Click the triangle, new script, bullet.gd. This is an area 2D node, and this code is extending it. So I'm going to open this up again, and then I'm going to delete all the stuff that's already in here. So the bullet's going to go about 100 pixels per second, if that's what you want to call it. And this vector 2D has to do with the direction of the bullet. You have two parameters in this vector 2. You have the X direction, and you have the Y direction. X has to do with going left and right, and Y has to do with going up and down. And we set this vector to this variable called direction so we can work with it. Then the velocity has to do with regulating the speed of the bullet. Okay, so we set our variables up, and below funk physics process delta, this has we're going to be doing with the movement of the bullet now. And once again, we set the direction so that the bullet will be going left and right. We're, never going to, we're not going to do it the y direction in this tutorial. We're just dealing with the x direction. And the x direction has to do with going left and right. And this says, the way we have it set up is, the bullet is going to be going to the left in the negative direction with this minus here. And then we attach the speed to this. And this delta velocity has to do with you know regulating the speed variable. And then select the velocity and motion. This should, this should actually be the same direction. I don't know why I got velocity here. Direction. So we set all this stuff in motion. And then this part down here, the position.x, this just says when the bullet goes off screen, it'll destroy itself to help free up memory in our computer. And just like, like I showed you with the timer, you could also do this through a node. For example, let's go back to our 2D view. See, you could you could also click on this enemy bullet and go to the plus, look for visibility notifier, 2D, you click create, click node, 
and then click screen exit click connect and then it makes your interview e bullet is selected and click connect and you'll see that you have a function down here that deals with whether the bullet's off screen or not but once again i prefer to do this through code because i feel like i have a little more control over what happens with my objects and things it, this is just personal preference other people on the web might, might uh, do it differently uh, there are tutorials where some people use that visibility modifier and and we'll show you how that works but this is just the way i do it And once the bullet destroys itself, uh, we're going to have a printout that says gone to let us know that the bullet has disappeared. This printout part is not necessary, but for this tutorial purpose, I put it here. Okay, so now we're done with our enemy bullet. So I'm just going to open this up more and go back to our 2D scene. And we're going to go to test room now. So now all we're going to do is just add in the enemy in our game. So let's do that right now. And an enemy .tsn. Okay, we're not going to add the bullet because the enemy is going to create the bullet, or and so we don't need to add the bullet in. So now that everything's set up, let's run our game and see what happens. Okay, see, our enemy is firing its gun, or you can look at this as a cannon too. And if you really want an enemy, okay, let's go to let's go back to our enemy script. See, if, if, if you really want this to be a, an enemy, you know, you could also, like, add, like, let's say, position.x minus equals uh, 3 or something. Then you can restart this game. And you can have the enemies moving around while it's shooting. You know, you can do stuff like that, and that can be your enemy. Kind of like that game called Gradius. You know, this sprite could be a spaceship or something. Just like the game Gradius or Life Force on Nintendo. I mean, I might have a square here, but you can change this to whatever you want it to be. So, that's all I want to show you. You can take what you learned in this tutorial and expand on it. Till next time. Thanks. Bye. Dude.